Hey guys, this week I'll be talking about something a little bit more nerdy, so bear with me. You might be familiar with the concept of Occam's Razor. The idea there is that the simplest explanation is usually the right one. The thing is, the obvious answer isn't always right. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let's say you flip a coin, and we'll assume that this coin is fair, so it's not weighted or anything like that, and all of us can safely assume that if you flip a coin, half the time it's going to be heads, and half the time it's going to be tails. It's always 50-50. Now, let's say that you flip this coin 10 times, and it comes up heads every time. On the 11th time you flip the coin, what are the chances it's going to come up heads? Some people might say, 100%, it came up heads every time, so the 11th time, it's going to come up heads again. Some people might say that, oh, it's probably a much higher chance. It's probably closer to 100 or at least more than 50%. The truth of the matter is that it's 50%. The 11th time you flip the coin is an independent event. It's an event that is completely separate from the other 10 events that came before it. The chances of it coming up heads on the 11th time is still 50-50. That is a different question and a different answer than if I were to ask you, if I were to flip a coin 11 times, what are the chances that it will come up heads 11 times? That's an entirely different kind of question than asking about just the one instance of the 11th time that you flipped that coin. Here's another simple example. Let's say that your doctor prescribes some medicine for you. You have three doses that you're supposed to take every half an hour. How long will it take for you to finish all three doses? The obvious answer that comes to mind is, well, there's three doses. I'm taking it every 30 minutes. So it's going to be 3 times 30 is 90 minutes, an hour and a half. And that would be wrong. Because if you're taking 3 doses every 30 minutes, if you take your first dose right away at minute 0, your second dose 30 minutes later, and your third dose 30 minutes after that, you will have completed all 3 doses in 60 minutes, 1 hour, not an hour and a half. The obvious answer isn't always right. Perhaps my favorite example of where the obvious answer isn't right is with the Monty Hall problem. And for that, let's go to the classroom. So the crux of the Monty Hall problem, which is loosely based on the game show Let's Make a Deal, goes like this. You have three doors. And let's call them A, B, and C. Behind two of the doors is a goat, and behind the third door is a car, and obviously the idea is you want to win a car. So let's say, for example, that you pick door A. So this is the door that I'm picking. The host, Monty Hall, then reveals one of the other two doors to show that there's a goat behind it. So That's a horrible looking goat, but the idea is that he showed that behind door B is a goat. Now the question posed to you is, should you stick with your original choice of door A, or should you switch to door C? The idea there, or the obvious answer is, it doesn't matter, because your chances are still 1 in 3 that you're going to get the car. But the real answer is, you should definitely switch to C, because it doubles your chances at winning the car. But why? That doesn't make any sense at all. Well, let me explain. So let me draw up a quick grid here. So we'll say that each of the three columns is a door. So again, A, B, and C. And then each row represents each time that we try to win the car. Under all these circumstances, just for the sake of simplicity, we'll say that the car is always actually behind door A, but it works out exactly the same if you put the car behind B and C, just three times over. So in our first example here, let's say that we pick A. Monty Hall then opens one of the other two doors that have a goat in it. In this case, both of them have a goat. So Again, we'll use our original example before, and there's our goat. That's kind of ugly. How about I go with a G instead for goat? Now that we have the goat there, 
uh, for this series of examples, we'll say that we always stick with our original choice and we don't switch to the other door. In this case, we find out that yes, there is indeed a car behind door A, and we're a winner. How about W for win? Now let's go to the second iteration where we pick B. When we pick door B, we know that the car is behind A, so the host, Monty Hall, will show that there is a goat behind C. In this case, we stick with our original choice, the car is here, and we lose, right? So again, for the third choice here, we pick door C. Monty Hall reveals that there is a goat behind door B. And again, the car is behind A. Because we stuck with C, we're wrong. So in this case, where we decide to stick with our original choice and not switch doors, two out of the three times, we're gonna be wrong. In other words, one in three times will be right. One out of three times is a winner. Now, what happens if we decide to switch doors every time? A, B, and C. So again, we're gonna make sure that the car is always behind door A. We pick door A. Monty Hall reveals a goat. We switch over to door C, and we're wrong. If we were to have picked door B, Monty Hall reveals the goat. We switch over to A, and we win. So for the third iteration, we pick C, Monty Hall reveals that there's a goat behind B. We switch over to A, and we win. So under this scenario where you decide to switch to the other door every time, you actually win to out of every three times. What this means is even though the obvious answer is that it shouldn't matter whether you switch or not because your chances are still one in three regardless, the fact of the matter is if you do switch, you actually double your chances so that you win two out of every three times. Why is that? Well, let's take it one more step further. So the idea, again, if I have the three doors, A, B, and C, is if you pick A, he shows that there's a goat, and then he asks whether you want to switch to C. If you stick with your original choice, you're stuck with your original choice. One and three. But if you switch to C, in effect, you're choosing both B and C. So what ends up happening is your chances are two out of three times that you actually win the car. So the big take home lesson from this week's vlog is that we should be critical, skeptical about everything that we read and hear. Never take anything at face value and don't jump to any conclusions because the obvious answer might not be the right one. Until next time, I'm Michael Kwan. Stay awesome, Gotham.